Whenever you're browsing on social media and you come across a link to a new piece of content, you'll have seen a social card. These are the enticing graphics that contain details and a preview of the content and really encourage you to click on it. But did you know that you can also create these social preview cards for your Material MK Docs website? And thanks to the brand new social cards plugin, you can even customize these cards to look exactly like you want. Material for MK Docs can even generate a completely different card based on the page that you're sharing. So if you're sharing a particular documentation page, the social card that gets generated can be based on the title, description, or any other data that you want for that specific page. So in this video, we're going to explore exactly how to get social cards working with Material for MK Docs. We'll cover all the setup and basic configuration. And then we're going to look at how we can build our own custom card using the plugin that comes with the Insiders version of Material for MK Docs. Okay, let's get right into it. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my demo Material MK Docs site to use the social cards. Now, if you don't have a Material MK Docs site set up yet, I'll leave a link um, either in the description or up above here somewhere where I go through a tutorial video on getting an MK Docs site with Material set up completely from scratch. So check that video out first to get your initial MK Docs site set up. The next steps in this video carry on where the previous one left off. So we have a full Material MK Docs site already up and running. Okay, so I'm here now in my IDE in Visual Studio Code. Now in order to get social cards working, we first need to install a few dependencies. These are described in the materials documentation. So we're gonna go ahead and just install all of these now. So in my terminal here, I've activated my Python in vir virtual environment with source VMV bin activate. And now I'm doing pip install pillow CIRO SVG and I'm specifying URL lib3 1.26.6. I found that I needed to do this just to get this working with my version of Python. You might not need to add this last bit in, but I found that I needed to, so I'm just going to leave that added in. So we'll go ahead and install that now. The next thing you need to do is install a few brew dependencies. So I'm doing brew install, Cairo free type, uh, lib biffy, lib biffy, lib biffy lib jpeg uh, png zlib so just go ahead and install all of these these are all listed in the documentation as well if you just want to copy it over from there instead of typing it in okay so bruce installed those for me the last one i need to add is this png quant so brew install png quant so the next thing i would need to do is add the socials plugin so i've just put in this plugin here into my mk docs yaml and i've just added the socials plugin and that should be all that we need to create just a very simple social card. So let's just try that out. Let's do mkdocs serve just to launch our site. So we get a message back that the site is running. Now, if we look up here in the cache folder, this cache folder has appeared. And I've got two pages in my documentation portal at the moment, this index and this page one. So we've got a couple of images that have appeared here. And these are the social cards for each of those pages. So a couple of very simple social cards have been created. And again, if I was to share one of these pages now, this is the social card that would appear. So if we take a look at one for page two here, if I maybe split this over to the right. So for this page two, I'm just gonna add a little bit of metadata at the top. So I'm just gonna add a page title and a description. So again, this metadata at the top, I've just added my title, my call page, and then a page description. So if I save that now, if we look over here, a new card has been rendered. So now we can see that this My Call page has been rendered. So this time it's changed the title of the page and it's changed the description as well. So what about if we wanted to change the color of the card? Well, that color at the moment, that's just coming from the default color that we're setting in our MK Docs YAML. So I'm just gonna change these colors over to blue. So they're teal at the moment. I'll just change those over to blue and save that. And also it would be cool if we had a logo appearing there as well. So at the moment it's just defaulting to this logo because we haven't actually set one explicitly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set an actual logo for my site as well. So under the theme and name, I'm gonna add an icon. For the icon, I'm gonna set a logo. For the logo, I'm gonna set it to this user solid nurse. Okay, I'm gonna stop MT docs with control and C. I'm gonna restart the server again. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna delete these three cards. So these are just in the cache at the moment. So now when I save again, so I just make a change over here and I just save. Now it should regenerate the cards. So we can see these two new cards appeared and this time they've got the blue background and the icon has changed. So it's changed to the icon that we set in our MK docs. So that's how to use the basic social cards in Material. Now this is what comes with the free and standard version of Material for MK docs. 
Now, if you want to go further, there's a ton of customization that you can actually do to these cards to get them looking exactly like you want. Now, this feature and many others are available as part of the Insiders program for Material. So let's talk a bit about what that is now. So the Insiders program basically means you become a sponsor of Material for MK Docs. So a sponsorship starts at just $15 a month. And when you become a sponsor, you get access to a ton of cool features in the Insiders program. Now, obviously, not everybody is in a position to be able to become a sponsor. But what I love about Insiders is that once new levels of sponsorship are reached, those features then become released to everybody as part of open source. So I'm on the Insiders page now. If we go down and have a look at the goals that were completed, so if we look at when the funding reached the $500 level, then these features were made available. And then as, as we go up through the different levels of funding, more and more features have been made available over time. So at the time of recording here, we can see that funding is on 11,400 a month. And so we can see that once funding gets to 12,000, the blog plugin is going to be released along with these other things like annotation, navigation icons, etc. So for the social plugin, which we're gonna talk about in a moment, that isn't planned to be released until the $24,000 level. So if if you're not able to sponsor right now, it will probably come in future, but it's probably not going to be available for a little while. So if this, if this is something that you really want, then it might be worth considering sponsoring the project now. Now, if you want more details on the Insider scheme, so how it works, how to get it installed and set up, etc., then do just drop me a comment below. I'd be happy to make a video on it if there's interest from the community. But for now, let's get back to looking at how social card customization works. So I'm back now in my IDE and I've created a brand new project. And this one is using MK Docs Material Insiders. So if you've just subscribed to Insiders, then the documentation explains exactly how to get your Insiders repository set up. So in my project, I've got hardly anything. I've basically just got this index.md file. All it's just got is a little bit of metadata here with a date and a few tags. And then it's just got a heading for the page. And then in my MK docs, all I've just got set up is the site name and I'm installing the material plugin. So I've activated my Python virtual environment. So just with source VMV bin activate, let's just do an MK docs serve right away just to check that the site's loading. Okay, so this time the site is running on local host. So let's add in the social plugin. So I'm gonna say plugins and the plugin we want is the social one. So this time when we launch the site, we can see that this cache folder appeared inside the assets, we can see we've got our social card that's been generated. So Material MK Docs comes with four different templates that we can use right away. So at the moment, because we're not specifying at all, one at all, it's just going to the default one. So let's specify one now. So we'll just say the cards layout. So we could leave that as the default. So that's what it's set to at the moment now, the default. So another one we could change it to is default variant. So you see there that when we saved it, it's changed slightly. The card over on the right now is rendering slightly differently. Another one that it ships with is Accent. So again, that looks a little bit different. And the fourth one I think is Invert. So there we go. So we've got a slightly different layout and color scheme based on those four defaults. So we haven't got any logo appearing at all at the moment because we haven't defined one. So let's go ahead and put one in our MK Docs YAML. So underneath the name, I'm gonna define an icon. So I want that icon to be the logo, and then the logo I'll just use is material, uh, let's say material cat. So if I save that, and now my logo is appearing on my card when it re-renders. So if I changed it over to accent, for example, that's what the accent card looks like. Okay, let's add some other customization. So the other thing that we can add is cards layout. Oops, cards layout options. So the first thing that we might change is the background color. So I'm setting the background color to this office background, and then that updates the background color like so. The other thing that we could do is we could set a background image. So in this layouts folder, I've got this stairs.jpg image in there already. So let me set the background to that. So underneath background color, I'll just set the background image and save that. Now notice that the image hasn't updated over here on the right, and that's because our color has, isn't set to any transparency yet. So to get the transparency, if I add 8F at the end of the hex code, save it this time, and now because I've made the color slightly transparent, I get the, the image gets tinted uh, with the color. So that gives us a really nice effect there like so. So if we wanted to see the full image just without any color, we could just add a color with full transparency. So if I had hash and all of the uh, circles like this, now we get the image uh, just, to, just displayed with no color at all. I'm just gonna put it back to the one with the uh, slight transparency because I think that looks a bit better. 
So it's adding these two characters at the end, this H and F, that's what gives our color the transparency. So if you want to learn a bit more about how to set transparency in your hex codes, I'll leave a link to a GIST repository below. I'll leave a link to that in the description and that explains the different codes that you can set to add transparency to your colors. Okay, so the next thing we might wanna do is just change the color of our text. So I'm gonna set the color to this code here, this kind of orangey color. Okay, that looks sort of cool. Another thing we can do is we could change the font. So if we set the font family, the font family, sorry, the font family to caveat, then we get this nice font come up here like so. So you can choose any font that you want, any font that's available in Google Fonts. You just put it in here and then the plugin's gonna go away and it will download the font for you. It's gonna put it in your cache up here and then it will render the font right in your card as easy as that. Okay, so we've seen some of the really basic options for social cards, like setting an image and changing the colors, etc. So let's now look at how we can design our own social custom card completely from scratch. Okay, let's start by turning on debug mode. So having debug switched on can really help you when you're designing your cards. So I'm gonna set debug to true. And I'm also gonna set the debug color to yellow. So if I just save that now, so now you can see all of these yellow lines have appeared. So what each of these yellow lines or boxes represent, these represent a different layer in our social card. So the way that the social cards get built is, is just like in Photoshop, you just add layers upon layers and on layers upon layers upon layers. And that's how you do it with these social cards as well. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna switch the cards layout. I'm gonna switch it away from the default accent. I'm gonna switch that to something called custom. So what that's gonna to point to is, it's gonna to point to a custom YAML file that's gonna live in my layouts folder. So in my layouts folder, I'm gonna create a new file and I'll call that custom.yaml. So again, this custom, this custom file, this is the custom.yaml that I just created over here. That's what it's gonna to point to now. So in the custom.yaml, let me just add in the basic code. So the first thing that we need to do is define the size of the card. So this is just the size of the card in pixels. So the size is gonna be 1200 by 630. And then under that size, we just add our different layers. So we're just gonna add lots of different elements into this layers object. So the first one I'm gonna make is just gonna be the background. So I'm just gonna call this background. For the background, I'm just gonna use an image and I'll just use the image that I used previously. So that image lived in the layouts folder and it was called stairs.jpg. And for the color overlay on that image, I'm just gonna set that to this 8F just to make it transparent. So let's go ahead and save that and see what that looks like. I need to save my MK Docs YAML as well to point to the new custom card. So now this is what our card looks like. So all it's got at the moment is it's set to 1200 by 630 and it's just got this background set. So it's just got the background set with the stairs. We can see all the yellow dots. These are just coming in from the debug mode. So if I was to turn debug off, that's what the card would look like at the moment. But we're gonna leave debug on because we need it to build out the rest of the card. Now all developers know that Half-Life is the greatest video game of all time. Hmm, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But anyway, to pay homage in the rest of this video, we're gonna generate a Half-Life social card. Okay, so the first layer I'm gonna add other than the background, this time I'm gonna add the Black Mesa logo. So remember Black Mesa is the laboratory or the setting for Half-Life essentially. So we're gonna use that logo as a, as a um, as an image here. So what I'm saying here is I just want the size of this particular box, in this case, the logo, I just want it to be 96 pixels by 96. And we're offsetting that by a factor of 64 um, from the X axis and 460 or so from the Y axis. We're then setting it to an icon. So the value of that icon we want to be from the material and then the black Mesa icon. And then we're setting the color at the moment to this hex value. So let's save that now. And we can see here now that the icon has appeared. So this is the Black Mesa icon. And so now we're starting to build out our social card. Okay, so let's add another element. So we'll add another layer. So this layer is gonna be the Black Mesa name. I'm just gonna save that so we can see that appear. So again, similar to before, we're just setting the size of this box. That's 320 by um, a height of 42. So that's this box here. We're offsetting it again by this factor. So 186,470. Then we've set the content. We just want the content to be Black Mesa. So again, we could just change that to anything. Then that's gonna render into the card. So we'll just leave it at Black Mesa. We set our color here to this color, same color as we set above. And this time we're setting a particular font as well. So we've chosen the font family of Inter and the style here of Bold. 
So again, any style that comes with this particular font family will be available. Or if you choose a style that doesn't exist, then I think it should just default. Yes, yeah, so it should just default to, I think, the regular style. So we'll just leave that set as bold. That looks good. OK, let's add another layer. Let's add a subtitle under that. So it's very similar to what I've set, what I've done above. This time I've just used the same font, but I've just set the style to be thin. And I've just changed the offset slightly um, and the size, the size slightly. So if we just zoom in, we should just be able to see. Uh, if I turn off debug, actually, that might help. We'll be able to see it a bit clearer. So if I turn off debug, this is what our social card is looking like so far. So it's already coming together nicely. We turn debug back on. OK, let's go down and add some more layers. So the next layer I'm going to add is the page icon. So what this is doing is, again, it's just adding quite a large box here of 630 by 630. It's offsetting that by um, 800 pixels and then it's choosing an icon again. Now this time the icon that we're choosing we're setting it to this color as before but this time we're using what's called ginger syntax and we're using this to basically give it an option or give MK Docs an option of which icon to select. So what it's going to do is it's going to look on our page metadata and it's going to see if we've got an icon set. So at the moment we don't have any icon set in our metadata and so if there is no icon set then it's just going to fall back to the Black Mesa icon. So let me just save that and see what that looks like. So again, because no icon's been set, it's just fallen back to this Black Mesa icon over here like so. If I open the file, if I go under the tags here, if I do add in an icon for this page into the metadata, so I've added this icon of Material Cat. So here, this time now, because the icon exists in our metadata, it's picked up, it's picked up the icon here. And it's because we've set it to a cat, it's, run, it's generated that in the card. So again, this is how you can change the card for the different pages. You can set a different icon for a page, or you can leave it out just to default to the default icon. I'm just going to comment out the cat for now, because the Black Mesa logo looks a little bit better in this case. OK, let's keep going. Now let's add some page tags. So this time I'm setting up my box to be 320 by 30. I'll just add a comment here saying I'm setting the page tags. So if I just save this so that the tags appear. So the tags have appeared over here on the right so we can see research and artifacts. So these are the two tags that we'd set up uh, within our metadata. So again, inside the content inside here, again, we're using ginger syntax here just to check if tags exist. So it will only print the tags if they exist. So it's using an if to check, check page, metadata, tags. And if the tags exist, then it's joining them and it's printing them out there like so with the join with the comma in place. Again, if I change this, if I added another tag, save that. So this time it would add the tag in here, but this time I would need to set the box to be a little bit bigger. Otherwise, the text isn't going to render. So again, if I was to just remove the tags, so if we had no tags, for example, if I save that, so this time no tags appear. But we'd rather have tags, so I'm just going to put those back and save them in there like so. So we're setting the align of the text here to start, so we could change the align. If we change that over to end, for example, we can see now that the tags have moved to the end of the box. So again, there's lots of different align options. Again, you can read about these in the documentation, see how the different types work. I'm just going to leave this on align start. OK, let's add in an icon for those tags as well. So this time I'm adding a page tags icon. And so again, I'm using ginger syntax here as well. So I'm just saying if tags exist, then add the icon to add in this particular icon. And if they don't exist, then don't add in any icon. And we can just about see that the icon has appeared there. If I maybe turn off debug again quickly. And now you can see a bit clearer that the icons appeared. Turn debug back on just so that we can finish off. OK, let's go down. Let's add a bit more. Now let's add an, another layer and this time we're going to add in a page date. So similar to like we did before, it's just checking in the metadata if a date exists. And if it does exist, then we're saying, OK, get the date and now do the conversion. So to convert it into this format. So again, you can read about this in the Ginger documentation just to see how you can use this this syntax. But again, because you have full access to the Ginger document, to the Ginger templating, you know, you can do lots and lots of cool stuff that will then render in your social card. So again, if we look in our index, we've got our date set to here. So now if I just go into my, oops, I don't want to close that. Uh, no, go into the custom.yaml, save that. And now we can see that the data is generated at the bottom here uh, with this syntax. Again, I think I'll need to turn off the debug so that we can see that. Set that to false. 
Let me just zoom out a bit. So then here, now we can see the date's been set to June 1, 2023. So it's done that even though that we've got the date in this format here. So it's converted the date for us using the syntax that we defined here. Let's add another layer. So we'll add another layer that's going to have the page date as well. Uh, another layer that's going to have the page date icon as well. So we'll have that icon appear to the left like so. I forgot to add in a comment here for page date. So I'll just add that in. Okay, so our card is starting to look really cool now. So let's just go down, maybe add just one more layer or two. So let's now add in the page title. So again, I'm setting a layer of 864 by 256. This time I want the content to be the page title. So again, there's no title set for this page at the moment. So it should just default to the first heading that we have set in here. So let me save my custom YAML. And there we are, our text has appeared. So I'm setting the color to white. So I've set the font here like so. And again, I've set um, the lines and the heights that appear in this box. So let me turn on debugger as well so I can see what that does. Okay, so we've got this box here like so. And what we're doing is that we're, we're aligning the text in the bottom end. So we could just align the text uh, maybe at the start, at the top. That's one we can do. So yep, I think if you just set it to the start actually so the text can come up there. I think that looks better as it did before at the bottom end. Uh, let me get that back. There we go. So again, you can play around with the line, the, the amount of lines and the height that you want to set for the lines as well. So again, if we set it to that, then we can see it would look like this. This is a bit of trial and error. I found it takes, it does take a bit of time just to just to get it right and just to get it looking as you want. So if you read in again in the documentation, um, MK Docs materials, they do explain why they've chosen to go with this way and why you can't explicitly set a font size here. So it does calculate the font size automatically just based on the size that you're setting of the layer and of this um, using this lines amount and the height. Okay, so we're almost done for fun. Let's just set one more final layer. So I'm just gonna set a, I just wanna have a, like a line coming up down from the bottom right, just to show what that looks like. There we go. If I maybe turn off debug now. And there we go, there's our finished card. How cool does that look? So again, it's using the title of the page, it's using the date of the page, the tags that appear on the page. We've then added in this Black Mesa research facility, and this has all just been built out using our using the YAML that we've put into our custom.yaml. So if I was to share this page now on social media, this is the exactly what the social card would look like. So when I share it on LinkedIn or Twitter, etc., this is what the social card would look like, which is really, really cool. So there you have it. Custom social cards are now available for material for MK Docs, and honestly, they're pretty awesome. Now, what about next steps in terms of how to learn to build your own social cards other than what we've seen in this video? Well, a good thing to do first would be to go through the four different social cards that ship automatically with the plugin. So again, I'll leave a link to this in the description, but it just lives at this address here. So if we have a look at this default.yaml, so we can see this is how this social card has been built up here. So we can see it's using lots and lots of different Jinja syntax just to build up the card. We can see the different tags that get added and how, you know, how it gets generated generated essentially all of the different layers that we put in the different logo the site name the page title so this is kind of similar to some of the stuff that we've looked at in this video but it's obviously a bit more advanced for for this default so if i go back and if i go into the default folder we can see the other three are in here like so so again we can look through these and we can see how these work and how these get set so it's in a similar way but the layout is obviously slightly different so another cool thing to do if you wanted to design your own social card is to learn more of the Ginger syntax. So I'll leave a link to the Ginger documentation and you can have a look through here and see all of the things that the templating can do. But we did see a couple of basic examples in this video so where we were using if and end if statements and how we were you know, only rendering stuff on the page if it appeared and how we were using joins, etc. as well. So all things like that and loads more you can do. You have full access to all of the Ginger syntax. So the more you learn, the more customization you can do. So I hope you found this tutorial useful. What other Material MK Docs tutorials would you like to see? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. But that's all for this video. See you in the next one.